Hi, I'm Emma Mackey here on France 24 to talk about my new film, Emily, that's coming out in cinemas on the 15th of March. Today on Encore, the breakout star of TV series Sex Education. The Franco-British actress Emma Emily. Mackey is in Paris for the release of Emily, directed by British-Australian actress Frances O'Connor, in which she plays the role of Wuthering Heights author Emily Bronte. Shall we begin? Emma Mackey, hello. Hello. In the past 18 months, you've had four important film roles, um, Death on the Nile, the French film Eiffel, Emily, and soon Barbie. Um, you've just won the EE e. BAFTA Rising Star Award, mm -hmm. um, which is determined by a public vote. Your breakthrough performance was only four years ago um, in Sex Education. Now it's in its fourth season. How are you feeling? <laughs> when you put it like that, um, I feel good. I'm very, I'm very, yeah, it's very special. It's nice, nice to hear it like that. Yeah, it's been a good couple of weeks. Emily um, is out in France in March. Um, you grew up here in northwest France. Um, your dad is French and your mum is English. How much did you know about this English classic and um, Emily Bronte? Um, I'd read um, I'd read Wuthering Heights when I was younger, and I read books all the time when I was a kid, mostly in English, both in French and English, but had a particular affinity for reading in English. So I, yeah, I read a lot and was exposed to literature from a very very young age. So. Yeah, but then the Brontes are sort of, they're sort of them, and I think you study them in the UK, so sort of everyone knows about them, but but we don't really go into too much detail about their lives necessarily. So um, I got to explore all of that whilst doing Emily, which was fun. And you studied English literature and language um, at Leeds University in mm -hmm. the UK. Um, when you got to Yorkshire from France, was it like a Bronte novel? Was, was it a culture shock? Is that the question? Yeah. Yes, it was. I mean, it was very... It's, it was very different, but then I'd always kind of dreamt of moving to the UK anyway and um, wanted to pursue my studies over there, and that was always my goal, so I was very, very happy once I was there, and it was a very formative couple of years, and university is, is for a lot of people, so, yeah, it was a really exciting time. It felt like I'd achieved something. Do you think I could be a writer? Perhaps. You have to show me something first, though. I have lots of stories. Should we go back? Mm. So this is a story about uh, a young woman who lives in the middle of nowhere with her father, who's a reverend, and two sisters and a brother. She feels like she doesn't fit in and that everybody's starting to grow up. Really, the, the second half of the film is about her finding her voice and accepting who she is as a person by getting out and living life, even though it's hard for her. Um, yeah, and it's a, it's, it's a kind of invented origin story for Wuthering Heights. It's nothing left but bread. Did you hear them? Mr. Waitman, wasn't he? Insufferable. Did you hear what Reverend Miller said? Meaning of life in a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> what about Waitman's sermon? The actual words were all right. He speaks with such poetry, such truth. But any man can speak. What I want to know is, can he actually do? Do what? The film is a fictionalised retelling of Emily Bronte's mm -hmm. life. Um, she wrote one novel, about 200 poems, a few essays before she died, only age 30, mm -hmm. in um, 1848. Very little is known about her. Uh, was it fun to have this creative licence, or um, were you a bit worried about the diehard fans? <laughs> um, I was worried about historical accuracy in a first instance because I didn't know when I got the script for the first time, when I got offered the part after auditioning, I didn't really know any of the details of the life, so I sort of went into the film just with the script as, you know, as my first source, I would say. And then when I started reading all of the biographies and getting into the nitty gritty of who the Brontes were and who Emily was, I realised that, you know, there were many like historical discrepancies and that we weren't sort of doing that version of the story, we weren't doing a biopic, which was fine. So then once I sort of put that to one side and put my sort of quite... Um, academic tendencies, let's say, to one side, I sort of had to, yeah, it, it was quite freeing in the end because it just, it's just a story. So you just kind of focus on that and telling the story that's at hand. I have often struggled to understand you. <laughs> Your poetry. Do not bring shame on this house, Emily. And in the story, Emily um, struggles sometimes with her mental health. She t occasionally takes opium um, and she has an illicit um, affair with the parish curate, William Waitman, who really existed. Yeah. 
How would you describe Emily in the film? I just, I, I just want her to be seen or to be understood as someone who is very um, fiercely intelligent, because she was. Um, and she's a quiet observer as well. She sort of absorbs everything around her and, and absorbs what people tell her and from those experiences tries to understand who she is and understand the mechanics of her brain and the way that she can navigate things in the world. And, and it's, just, it's just quite interesting to explore things through her, I think. Um, but yeah, I would say intellig fiercely intelligent and observing and impulsive perhaps as well. She's also portrayed as quite rebellious yet withdrawn. Uh, I know your character Maven Sex Education was a bit of an outcast. What attracts you to these um, characters? It's not something I actively seek out necessarily. It just happens that I like the story or the script really more than anything and then the rest sort of falls into place. But um, there's something, I, I suppose there's something always a little bit intriguing and mysterious about someone who, is, um, who doesn't externalise themselves in, in a way that is you know, very effusive or evident, and I think I think Emily particularly is a quiet observer, so she's someone who is intriguing and you sort of want to understand what's behind the door, in a way. <laughs> and uh, and that's what I liked. I wanted to um, I wanted to figure her out, and, and we only had six weeks to shoot this film, so there was a real sense of urgency, dare I say, while we were filming it. There was a real pace and a real drive throughout it, and I think that helped tonally with the film and trying to understand how she sort of operates. Um, within the realm of you know her her family, but also the world around her and, and all of that. So yeah, it was quite it was it was quite spontaneous, I would say. Nature is always an inspiration. Yes, nature was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Though Job is very dramatic. I nearly went for Job. The rain was a good choice. Thank you. I do wonder though, how does God squeeze himself into all that rain? When he get wet. And tell us why yeah. you um, chose uh, Emma Mackey to play Emily Bronte. Yeah. She came in and read, and she was like the third person, and she did one scene, the first scene. And I just remember looking over to the casting director and thinking, wow, you know, she's just got something, something very special about her. And also, it was, it's not just like, oh, well, she's a great actress. It was like she was saying something that was going to really key into. Uh, Emily Bronte, in a way I knew that was going to be special. Freedom in thought! Freedom in thought! <laughs> Try it. Freedom in thought! A oh, pathetic attempt. Look, freedom in thought! Come on, really get behind it. Freedom in thought! Come on, give it some welly. Freedom in thought! Freedom in thought! For Emily and um, an up your upcoming film, Barbie, you worked with female directors. The Bronte sisters, they flew the flag for female literature, female authors, even though they're originally forced to publish under male pen mm -hmm. names. Do you find um, yourself attracted to these female-led projects? It's not something I actively seek out. I think I've just been very lucky that that has been the case. And it's just wonderful. And specifically, you know, actor-directors, it, 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 there's just another dimension in their way of working, and specifically on Emily. Frances was very, very sensitive um, and, and knew what she wanted and, and was so clearly passionate about Emily Bronte and the Brontes themselves and had been writing the script for 10 years. So she wasn't just directing us, she was you know, living every scene with us and was there with us along the way. So it was a really different way of working. And again, it helps to have that motivation, that drive behind every scene when you have such a short space of time to do it and on a very small budget. So it was, yeah, it was all the more exhilarating. You're supposed to be an artist, so be an artist. What is that? I wrote it. And Greta Gerwig's Barbie's out later this year. Uh, what was it like filming with uh, Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling? Great, they're, they're wonderful, but all the cast members were, and Greta is mm, one of my heroes and always has been. But she has, she's just so... She, you want to make her... All of the actors wanted to make her proud, in a way, and, I, and she has that really particular quality of wanting to... She really champions her actors and she's so in love with them and wants everyone to feel safe and confident. And so working in that environment was quite like beautiful and, and singular because everyone was really helpful and caring. And so you just wanted to yeah, do your best, really, which is quite lovely. I can imagine it's two very different universes, like Day Emily and, and, and Day and night. <laughs> Day and night, but that's the beauty of it. That's why I feel very lucky to be able to play you know, between the two, between the two worlds. So it was very, yeah, it was, it was pretty amazing. 
I'm quite excited about Bobby, but it's quite mysterious. And I was wondering, what can you tell us about it? Is my six-year-old going to like it, for example, because she's excited oh God, about it? I don't it. know. Again, I can't <laughs> say if it's... I'm not the person to tell you. I hope that it will be... It, it, it will be dense, for sure. There's a lot in there, and it, but it will be very colourful, and, and I think people will find it joyous. I hope so, anyway. I think it'll be one of those films that we we'll want to revisit and revisit and rewatch. That's what I'm hoping for. Filming has just wrapped up for the fourth season of Sex Education. Yeah. What's it been like to grow up and spend so long with one character? It's been a lot. It's been it's been interesting. It's been quite a journey. We were just saying this last week. I was watching um, Amy Lou. Amy's in Cabaret at the moment in London, and we, a few of, of us and the castmates went to go and see her. And, and it was just so amazing to see to think about how far we've all come together. And it's been such a school for us. I mean, quite literally, <laughs> it's been a school for us and an education. And and you know that's what a lot of us started with. It was our first sort of on screen job. So. Um, it's been pretty wonderful to see what everyone else is going on to do and the different paths we're taking and the different choices we're making and still finding this sort of core group of friends to go back to and, and to be we're just very supportive of one another. It's just really nice to have that, yeah, that core group. It's lovely. I4 was your first French language film. You live between the UK and France. Are there any French directors you'd like to work with? Yeah, a few. I, I, but I'm sort of, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to find the right people at the moment to collaborate with and find the right, some new voices in France as well. I think it's really important, and I don't really know who those people are yet, but I will find my way gently. But I'm very, I'd love to do another French film. Yeah. Okay. Very lucky. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everyone's strange if you look at them for long enough. Who are you? is ever changing the news doesn't wait france 24 gives a global perspective that an educated intelligent and active viewer is going to want to have to be able to fully understand the issues of the day that's why it will always be there to help make sense of world events Et ce, grâce à mon smartphone, parce que je ne reste pas souvent devant la télé. Quand une information survient sur la toile, j'utilise l'application de France 24 pour vérifier l'authenticité. For the best international coverage, 24 hours a day, no matter what, France 24 is with you everywhere, all the time. Liberté, égalité, actualité. actualité.